Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I would like to welcome all our viewers today from Qatar, the US, and the larger Arab and Islamic world. On behalf of the Qatar America Institute of Culture, or CAKE, my name is Fatma Dossari, the Executive Director and uh, your host today at Expressions uh, Talk, Art and Culture Talks. Um, CAKE is a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C. We create, curate, and execute art uh, and culture related research and programs from Qatar, the US, and the larger Arab and Islamic worlds. Today, we are hosting a wonderful guest uh, who is a photographer, Wendy Ewald, and she is going to take us uh, through a journey uh, of her photography. Uh, Photography journey and uh, also expressing her views on the Arab world and um, her general exchange uh, through her creative work. And uh, with that, we want to also note that on August 19, we celebrated World Photography Day. And we would like to thank all the uh, wonderful photographers who uh, submitted their uh, photography uh, also features. Uh, with us, and we were able to show them on our social media platforms, um, which I invite you all to join uh, so we get to know more about events like today. Um, and also, we want to um, hear more how Wendy was able to celebrate uh, World Photography Day, perhaps every day, not just on August 19th. Um, a little bit about Wendy, she has been working in the field for over 40 years and focuses on photography projects with children, families, women, and teachers. Her work has taken her all over the world, and today she will be speaking with us about her travels to the Middle East and her alphabet exhibitions in New York and Philadelphia. Wendy's unique approach to photography puts an emphasis on collaboration rather than the traditional photographer subject dynamic. Her work questions uh, the conventional definition of um, authorship and asks the audience to reflect on an artist's intentions, power, and identity. So welcome, Wendy. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We started this conversation, I think, what was it like pre-pandemic yeah and we had to go <laughs> together through a pandemic and today we are here today making this uh, collaboration happen so thank you so much for your patience and for being interested um in our organization yeah. so with that i want to give it to you wendy to take it from here and uh introduce us about yourself your work and um we're really excited to know more about you Thank you, thank you. Well, I um, started um, working uh, actually when I was um, in high school um, collaboratively with, um, with, with children. Um, I was really interested in, um, in how they would use a camera and how they would see as well as how I would see. Um, and um, so, at a certain point, um, I began working in, in the Arab world. Um, and I think that was 1995, but you'll maybe prove me wrong because it's been a long career. Um, and, um, and have continued to be very interested in, in the idea of how people think about photography in different parts of the world and particularly in, in the Arab world. Um, so I'll sort of go through that and then we'll have, um, you know, our discussion and, and hopefully lots of questions, um, because this is kind of a strange way of working, but, <laughs> but it has yielded so much, uh, um, in my life. And, um, and also I, I, I think it sort of began a way of working because it was over 50 years ago now <laughs> that, um, you know, that other people use as well. Um, so let's do the share screen. So um, in, um, obviously in 1995, I went to a, to a SILA in, in Morocco um, and was, was there for um, 
about four months um, working with, with young people, um, both in, in taking pictures of them and, and also in, in teaching them how to use a camera. And um, the, the, the first picture here is, um, is of Khadija. Um, and um, one of the things that, you know, that, that as many people know that, that it, it's kind of, it can be difficult to photograph, especially um, girls in, uh, in the Arab world. And so this is a, this is a picture that I, so I took pictures of all of them if, if they, they wanted that. And, and I think everybody did. And, uh, but then I was really interested in going farther than just having me take a picture, um, but having them add their own hand um, to, to the picture. So she's scratched or drawn um, in, in the way that, that she wanted to. Um, and she's chosen you know, her, her expression and, and her way of, of standing. Um, so it's not my vision, just my vision of her, but it's her vision of her and my vision of her together. Um, and um, the next one is, um, is Sakina, who is obviously a very different um, uh, girl than, than at that time in their lives, um, than Khadija. And, um, Sakina um, has put in, which I was amazed by, put in the evil eye, and many of the kids did put in the eye to protect them in, in their pictures, um, and then added this scratch, you know, this sort of um, vegetation in, in, in the front of the, the picture. Um, and um, so I did that with many, many of the girls and, and women. Um, and then the next picture is is uh, of a picture that was taken by Yasir um, and you know in, in the in the traditional Moroccan oven and um, it's the, the the film these guys were using was po Polaroid positive negative film which makes an made an instant picture which was unusual then but also made an, a negative at the same time that was a beautiful negative that can be blown up to any to almost any size. Um, and then the next picture is, the next picture is um, uh, Munia and uh, my little sister is praying, um, which is actually one of my favorite pictures, how she's managed to, um, you know, get everything, the composition in this exactly um, in a very pleasing way, which ends up focusing on the little girl. Um, and then the following one is this is something that I that I ended up doing very often with with young people is asking them to create pictures instead of just finding things in the world to take pictures of to actually make a world um, for the camera and photograph it. So this is the teapot is magically pouring tea in the glasses by Ab 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 Absalam Namir. And, um, and if you look carefully, you can see that there's a, um, a string coming down from the top, which is what is holding the magic teapot up. Um, and then he's used cushions on either side to make that kind of room. Um, and, um, so this, this leads, you know, many kids to, to really create very interesting pictures, um, and think beyond, um, you know, finding, um, what they have around them. Um, so I, um, we had an, um, exhibition at the end in, um, in the, um, House of Culture there. Um, and um, it really, I was amazed by their, the idea that, that they were very interested in, in photographing what they called monuments um, to their culture. So monuments could be an elaborate dress, it could be um, something that had to do with food, 
Um, but their culture was very interesting to them. And I've worked with many kids in different places. And, and I think that they were unique in that way. So then um, I, in, in 1997, I, I was asked by the, the, the person that I, that I worked with in, in um, Morocco, um, who was the head of the cultural, the uses cult, cultural program. Um, and she moved to Saudi Arabia. So when she got to Saudi Arabia, she invited me to come and, and teach um, or work with a group of, of women and girls there. Um, and I was only able to get a visa for, for two weeks. So we worked very hard and, and fast, but there was a lot of, a lot of things that came out of it. Um, a lot of pictures, exhibitions, um, connections that, that, um, I still have till today. Um, so this is a, um, a series that was made by Nadine Faisal bin Slager. Uh, self-portrait series, um, Who Am I, 1970 to 1997. And um, she's used the, you know, the, the side of the chair to obscure her face, but she's used the, her books and, and related pieces of her life to describe who she is. So she, you can probably see it better than I can, but on, on, the, um, on the left side, she has her engineering books because she is an engineer. And on the, the right side, she has childcare and um, a childcare book and, and toys. So this was actually a series of maybe 10 pictures and I just cut it down to these, to these two. But very creative, these, these women were, you know, by and large hadn't taken pictures, but they were extremely creative. Um, so this is one that I took of Joanna um, and um, we, um, towards the end of our time together, I asked them, you know, to come um, so that they could be um, uh, photographed in, in a way that they, that they thought wouldn't be harmful to them or, you know, would, would be protective. And so, um, so this is what Joanna wore and, um, and then she asked, um, or then I gave them the negatives to draw or write on. So in this case, Joanna has scratched with an etching tool, all these lines in the background and then taken a um, magic marker. I mean, a um, Sharpie, you know, permanent marker and drawn a line uh, around her sister because her sister, she wanted her sister to be the center of the picture, but also she didn't need to be covered in any way. Um, and uh, and this is another one that I that I did with Raja Alem, who who is a writer, um, um, very good writer, and published many books in Saudi Arabia. And she's holding Ibn Sirin's Book of Dreams. Um, and then she's written on the on her abaya um, quotations from from the book, um, and then added the books to the bottom. Um, and uh, we finally made made an exhibition at the end, or they did. I I, I was, you know, coaching from afar, but um, and at the House of Photography, and um, but of course they they had to be seen through by the sensors to figure out what we could use or what we couldn't. <clears throat> and what was strange to me is that this picture was, was a picture um, that had to be, none of the other ones I'm showing you, but it had to be um, cut from the exhibition. And this is portrait of Shadia Lem, who's a painter um, and, so she came to be photographed um, that day that we, we made these portraits um, with, um, you know, with the markings on her face that you can see. Um, and, um, and then I made the picture 
and then she took the negative and then she added the further markings and writings um, to it. So it has this kind of depth of the markings on her face, but then the markings on her, on the negative. And <clears throat> she's called it, I used to dream my paintings um, before painting them, but here my painting dreamt me. Um, so it was a very um, um, creative time for all of us. And, and um, I also worked with girls um, in, a, in a school. And these, these women that you see here, I, I worked with in a, um, actually at the house of the, um, because we had trouble finding a place um, to do it in the house of the, um, the cultural attache. Um, and the exhibition that we did was the first exhibition of photography by women in, in Saudi. Um, so this is, this is Raja self portrait of her, which is used a mirror um, to make this double image of herself. Um, and they were using Instamatic cameras with, with um, Kodak Instamatic cameras with um, color film. So, um, and anyway, a lot of people um, have seen that project and have been very interested in it. So then I got back to the US and, um, and actually I did many pic, um, projects with, um, with people, um, Arabic communities in, in the Midwest, I mean in the, Med, in, in, um, in the US. So this was um, a project I did right after the beginning of the, um, Iraq war and um, when it was right before actually and we were we were waiting for to see what was going to happen and this was in a school um, in Queens and you know it was sort of controversial to do this and, and I met with some resistance from people who were saying why are you working with with Arabic speaking um, young people why aren't you doing it with Jewish young people? Or <laughs> because it was a very difficult time then, and which is all reason all the more I, I wanted to be able to do this project. And I also wanted to look at the alphabet, which is a, a very simple childlike um, um, piece um, because it, it sort of, it's very playful and, um, and very elemental. So I wanted the kids to be able to, um, to work with their own alphabet um, in a place where they don't usually get to do it. And it was also during Ramadan. So we did it during when everybody else was eating lunch and um, we sort of created a community um, through that. So, so we took all of the, you know, all of the letters and here you have Aleph and, and then the, the students, figured out words that they wanted to represent the letters. So that's, you know, Amar command. And, uh, and, then, um, and then we uh, acted them out and they, we have different um, backdrops. And actually we did it on the street in, in Queens um, and the, the power because we we're using flash came out from the principal's window. And so we had the studio basically on the street. Um, but it was really a lot of fun. Um, and then once we shot the, the pictures, then the students wrote the letter and the word on the negative, which is quite complicated to do when you're, um, when you're using color because you know the, the, the yellow there may be blue. So they had to actually learn how, to, how color works in, in making photographs. Um, and there's Ba Portugal orange. Um, and so they would practice before they, they decided how they wanted to, to write it um, on the image. Um, in Jean, the word is jar for neighbor. Um, so they decided how to 
make these pictures. Um, and I worked with them to figure out how to do it in the best way we could. And eventually what we did is they were in the Queens Museum in New York and, and we hung them, we printed them on silk and hung them from the ceiling. Um, so they looked very beautiful. Um, and, you know, they would move in the, in the slight breeze. And um, I think one of the things that, that <clears throat> people said when we opened it is that they were really happy to see, see their language portrayed in such a beautiful way and in a museum. And this is one of my favorites, Sheen, uh, Sham, Smell. Um, so they became conscious of the colors they were using and how to use them in the best way. Um, this is Ha, Ham, Misery or Suffering. Um, by one of the, the boys who said he was gonna wear an Algerian suit. And so I thought he meant he was gonna wear, you know, a traditional suit. And I was very surprised when he showed up in this, but it's, it's perfect. Um, and then most recently, I expanded this to all immigrants. And this was at the beginning of, of uh, when Trump was running and the beginning of his administration, we worked on it. So it was a very, you know, it's something I wanted to do because of what was happening. And um, it actually um, was, it took us about, about a year and a half to get it up, but it was on the, um, the, um, the services building um, right across from the, the mayor's office. Um, so it was in a prime spot and it's where they do all their, the, the protests are there um, in a square near there or right behind there. So, um, so it was, um, I think it was important and it stayed there, it's supposed to stay there for two months, it stayed there for a year. Um, so this is a girl from um, Uzbekistan and um, they decided they wanted to have the, their word that they chose which she chose America um, because that she, they wanted to have them both in their own language and in English. So America with the K is how it is written in Uzbeki. And, um, and then I had them write definitions, which here you can see is a country where everything starts first. So they wrote their own definitions. And here I am, photographing so you can see um, how we were doing this. This was in the courtyard or not a courtyard really, but just outside the school. And, um, and then she chose a white background to be photographed with. And this, this is I um, for immigrants. And so you see how it turns out here. So she's, she brought in that, the, or no, that, jacket was another girl's jacket who who actually arrived in the US in that jacket and then she's using um you know a, a suitcase by um by someone else who who came with that suitcase so there was a lot of emotional um you know conversation so here she says immigrant someone who migrates from one country to another to start a new page of their life um, and this is Doha. No, this is not Doha. This is, yeah, this is Doha, <laughs> sorry. And she chose the word trust um, and um, to find your way in the darkness with the help of others. Um, and this is one of the most profound ones to me, I, I think. And she came from Iraq and Turkey and somewhere else. And she's just, has been many places, but she's a remarkable person. So here you can see how the immigrant alphabet is, has been hung um, and on this building. So it wraps around the whole building. And then the, on the, the red squares in front are the, um, the definitions of the word and the word used in a sentence that, that they made up.
And, um, and finally, here is um, culture, the customs, art, and achievements of a particular country. This, this um, was done by a girl from the Sudan, and, and she's there with, with her mother. Um, that's her hands um, above. And um, so it was something that, you know, the, the students felt proud of. And, um, you know, it could have been a difficult um, program, but it, it in, in the end, it was beautifully received and um, especially by the mayor. Um, and we did a book um, of it, um, a young adult book for um, the publisher, Little Brown. And um, so it's used in schools as, as the book is used in schools. And so it has a life beyond, beyond this exhibition. Um, so that's, that's what I have. And uh, there have been other projects I have done too, but, but these are some of the most ones that I think are most important. Excellent. Thank you so much, Wendy. We really enjoyed uh, all the photos that you just shared with us and um, also all the context of all these amazing, uh, of your photography journey. And um, I'm sure that a lot of um, our viewers have a lot of questions and I have a lot of questions myself. Um, I want to start uh, by asking when did the shift to this more collaborative photography style uh, develop from the beginning of your career or develop along the way? Um, and if so, what sparked it? Um, well, it did start in the beginning of my career. In 1969, um, when I first got a large format camera and I applied to the Polaroid Foundation for cameras and film, because they, they did that um, to, um, to work with uh, Native, um, Native American students in, in Canada, in Labrador. Um, and so I had the advantage of all of a sudden seeing, oh, these are amazing pictures. They're, you know, they make more sense than my pictures do. And um, so, so I, and that, but I didn't think it would be my career and um, until, until much later, um, probably before I went to, um, before I went to Morocco, of course, but, but it took me a while to say, oh, this is, this is my life. And from your travel in the yeah. Middle East and North Africa, what did you take home with you? Well, I was really interested in in how, I mean, I've always been interested in how people see pictures and, and um, I mean, the medium itself has really fascinated me. And then the medium within different cultures um, has fascinated me. And um, I think one of the things was, was the sort of collective vision um, that these kids have. I mean, I think that, that you know, we had, have the idea that it's really important you know, that an artist is a single individual, you know, who, who makes work. But, but I think they were much more interested in, in, you know, as I said, the monuments, for example, you know, to their culture. So it was, it had a different, it had a bigger connection um, than, than it would have in other, in other places. And, and also the idea of what images need, uh, not just photographs. Um, and, um, and how photographs fit into to images. And then the idea that the writing was sort of images in and of themselves too, you know, the beautiful writing. So, um, so it, was, it, it was a very rich, um, you know, experience. Um, and, and also I talked to a lot of kids, you know, I mean, I recorded their stories and, um, and also how the stories of, of the cultures, how they fit into their lives um, and their imagery. Um, so. Excellent. 
um, I want to also talk about your PBS film um, on Portraits and Dreams book, which you published in 1985. Um, this documentary revisits photographs by the Kentucky school children in the 1970s, gaining the insights of the now adult students. Um, can you tell us more about this project? Um, and usually people always make a kind of comparisons between uh, the book and the, and the film. So can you tell us more about like the similarities and differences um, in, in both products and um, also your experiences and impressions? Well, um, I didn't intend to make a, a film. <laughs> I, uh, the book I made in, it was an important book, I guess, in, in um, 1985. And, and I think it was, you know, people hadn't seen pictures by children published. Um, and these, these children made amazing pictures that, that were as, as good, if not better than, than adult photographers. And they were very creative. So I, um, you know, it, it got a lot of publicity, which was, which was nice. Um, and, and then, you know, eventually people started working more in that vein. Um, so it seemed right to, you know, publish it again. So that's where I started is like, I'm, I'm going to publish this book again, but I want to look back and look at, um, you know, what they see now when they look at it and what they think of the experience now, because usually, you know, especially with educational projects, you don't really know what effect it's had. I mean, people make a lot of claims, but, um, you know, to have them themselves um, say, you know, what it meant to them, uh, I thought was important. And um, so then, of course, it meant finding the kids, um, which, we did find a lot of them. And then we had to focus on, on a smaller number of kids, you know, to do, especially to do the film, but also to do the book. Um, and, um, you know, it was, I was a little nervous going back to, to see and make sure that they were all right, or that they thought that, you know, that this was a good thing that they had done. And from the first times I met them, you know, after, 35 years or 30 years, something like that. It was, it was clear, like it was the same relationship. I mean, in, in a way, I mean, we were still playful with each other and they had, a, you know, remembered that time in their lives very fondly as I do. And so it was quite easy um, to tell stories back and forth. Um, and, and then a, a friend of mine, um, in, in Kentucky, who I had worked with back then too, she said, well, we got to make a film. And, and so that's kind of how that, that started. And, um, but it was hard <laughs> and, you know, the two of us directed it. Um, and we chose, you know, tried to choose a spectrum of the kids who've had, who've had, you know, amazing lives, ones who've had difficult lives. Um, but the thing that really came out of all that, um, I think, is that they're extraordinary people um, with, despite their struggles, um, for some of them, um, they, um, you know, they're, they're people that you would want to know and that have contributed to the world um, or their community. Um, and then the book, was, was an opportunity to have them talk more about photography and how, you know, what did it mean to have a camera? How do they see that now? What is the difference between memory and photographs? And very interesting um, conversations. Um, so, and then also they, they were making pictures um, now. So, so you could see the difference in their in similarities and how they use the camera. Wonderful. So the, the title, as you know, the event is about, you know, kind of the, the Arab identity through the lens. So I want to talk about your experience in particular to um, Arab women. And when you try to kind of 
uh, document a moment or capture that moment through the lens. Um, how are you able to document and capture their stories through your photography um, experience without kind of feeling that you are subjecting them to any kind of, you know, orientalist, you know, kind yeah. of notions? Uh, or how, how did you find the balance and, you know, for their voices through your photography? Well, um, I mean, it's sort of easy to talk about um, Saudi Arabia. Um, I, in the, in the beginning, um, I, had, I had two, I think I had two groups of women and one group of girls. Um, and, um, you know, the, the girls were excited about making, you know, photographs. Um, and the women were more cautious and um which is understandable and um so the first couple of you know sessions we had um i thought were were a little bit tense and you know the idea of like you know what do you think you're doing and and um and so you know listen i understand you know i'm open to to talking about it and then uh I guess somebody brought in other books that I had done. Um, and one is especially about a, a woman in South America. And, and both the Raja and, uh, and um, Shadia, who you saw the portraits of, they, they asked to take them home with them, the books, and, and read them. And then they came back the next day and they said, OK, this is OK. She, she gets it. You know, and sort of talk to everybody about it, and things got you know more, you know, easier, let less less tense, and it was also interesting. Is during that time there was a woman from France who, a uh, reporter who did speak Arabic, and which I don't, but I mean I know a little bit, and um, and she was talking to the women about how they needed you know, to fight back and, um, uh, you know, it was their, their role to do that. And they were offended afterwards. They talked, they talked to me about it and, and which was interesting, but I mean, I think that what I wanted to do is just to leave them, leave it open for them to do what they wanted to do. Um, and I would, you know, I wasn't going to ask them to, to do anything that you know was was difficult and i was very interested in how how they wanted to handle it mm -hmm. you know it wasn't i didn't want to get to something that was um that was orientalist or 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 confirmed any kind of um stereotype i mean these were really creative interesting people and that's that's what i was interested in yeah, that's, that's really wonderful. And, and I think a very important work for all creatives, um, especially when it comes to women issues, because uh, throughout history, you know, women history in, in general and women's struggles were not very well documented. And, and this is why I think your work is really important because you kind of turn it to the subject to determine how they want their story to be told. So I really think this is a really good um, um, kind of point that you made. Um, I want to talk now about uh, current affairs. So uh, the last two, I would say, World Photography Days were probably celebrated by photographers from their own homes, uh, street photography. So things were different. And generally, uh, photography for the last two years um, have been kind of shifting, I would say, uh, due to the pandemic. So how do you think uh, new approaches and new styles and technologies being adopted by photographers um, is, is kind of changing uh, nowadays because of the pandemic? And how did it change you uh, and your photography journey? Well, you know, it's interesting. I didn't even know it was World Photography Day. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not a good answer. I can't give you a good answer about that. Because you celebrated every day. So this is why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think so. I think so. 
And, um, but um, I think it has definitely changed. Um, and, well, for me, just moving to digital was a terrible struggle um, because I loved the, the dark room and I loved working with people with this physical, um, you know, the people that I worked with, you know, like working out with that film and they could scratch the film and um, it, it, it just was, um, was something they could do together, um, working in the dark room um, and, you know, kids working in the dark room, all that stuff was great um, and created a sense of community. Um, but, um, but I think as far as the, the pandemic goes, it's, it's interesting because I didn't really, I mean, I did a lot of work. I finished the, finished the film, I finished the book, I, you know, it was a time to not photograph. It, it was a time to just be, be with myself and what I, what I needed to do. Um, but then it's interesting, now I have a, a project that, that um, was started by, well, it's a National Geographic project um, about freedom. And um, I, I think it was started because, and then they asked like, I don't know, 10 photographers or something to participate. And because photographers couldn't go out and take pictures and what were photographers doing? And one of the projects I've been working on was, is um, about my own family. And I grew up in Detroit and, um, and uh, so I, um, I was able to, you know, I collected all these pictures over the years and, and also done a lot of research. Um, and it's really a story about how, you know, the equality or inequality in Detroit within, within my family and other communities. And um, so it's great to be able to, you know, just, focus on something that, that you don't feel all the time that you have to go out and find pictures. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Um, I wanna talk now about the Immigrant Alphabet Project mm -hmm. because it's kind of a, uh, not just, you know, a photography project or an exhibition, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it comes in, in different- uh, Forms, yeah. Yeah, in different forms, exactly. So I want to talk about it. Um, if you can, you know, tell us more about it. Um, and um, if you, especially for, you know, kind of the recent, in, in the light of the recent uh, events in Afghanistan and mm -hmm. uh, overall the refugee experience today, um, yeah. we want to know how the creative community um, let's say creative uh, nonprofits like ourselves mm -hmm. or creative uh, individuals like yourself can support the refugee experience and the uh, people who go through, uh, you know, uh, struggles in uh, areas of conflict or, uh, you know, personal struggles. How can we, you know, all collaborate together as a creative community to support, uh, you know, these individuals? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, and what, I'm also working with a group of, um, of Mexican um, young people now in Chicago. Um, and they're a different, um, you know, their parents were refugees. Um, but, um, and here's the book. <laughs> um, and I'll just to tell you what, what it's like. Um, so it starts, it starts with an, you know, with a word. It starts with, really with a letter, but then a word, then an image. Um, and, and then the definition. And as, a, as I read you, and I think, and, and how it's used. And then it's paired with, mm -hmm with Malika's, Malika's um, interview. Um, and these all, these stories are all things that I recorded. Um, 
And um, like, you know, it's just like in 2011, 11, on September 2nd, it was the first day of school in my country. We actually won a green card in the lottery, blah, 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 blah. So it, it, it is all these different um, experiences of, of being an immigrant or a refugee, um, that there isn't one experience. And a lot of these kids are also talking about how difficult it is for them now. You know, there's the journey involved in this. Um, there's, I'm just gonna see if I can show. Um, but overall, the importance was that they became a community. They had never talked to each other before. Um, you know, they were in a very big school that had a lot of immigrants and there were like 18 of them. And they became very interested in each other and each other's languages, each other's cultures and, um, and the things that were difficult for them um, yeah, so, so her story, um, is, is very, um, complex and, you know, she was born in Iraq and three years old, we moved from Iraq to Syria and then Syria to the United States. And, um, and so she talks about, you know, the soldiers coming in in Iraq and, you know, that experience. And then, and then getting, finally getting, you know, to, well, Syria and the bombs going off and then the US and, and, um, and then, um, but then she says something like, sometimes I feel even when we didn't have anything in Iraq, <clears throat> we were just so happy because we had each other. Last year, it was really hot over there. They sent us pictures sitting in a park but it wasn't a park, it was like a junkyard. They were all sitting happy with a picture, with a picnic, sorry. So the idea of happiness, you know, was one of the words H is for happiness. What is happiness? You know, happiness is a family. It's not just, you know, you know being free, um, but if you don't have those connections, it's hard. Um, <clears throat> so they explore all these things you know, and I just did, I did a half hour interview with each one of them um, <clears throat> by myself and, um, and then, you know, edited these stories. But along the way, we be, all became very close and they, and they also became very um, interested in advocating for refugees. They had never done that before. Um, and <clears throat> So we had a couple of, of, of panel things with, with the mayor and um, they were incredibly articulate and they understood that, that they could um, say what they felt um, and that they could be received and heard. And so I think, I think it was really much more important project than, than I would have thought when I started. Um, and then we continued, then a book happened. And so there was another, you know, um, but I think it, it, for many of them, it, it really changed their lives. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it must have been really rewarding. And um, I want to ask also, how can we integrate like some kind of creative projects and forms, as you mentioned, into a uh, school curriculum? Mm. Uh, um, I remember you mentioned that immigrant alphabet at some point was considered to be as part of um, educational institutions. So how can we combine that and um, together create more of inclusive and peaceful societies and show diversity um, as we, we aim in our organization and I'm sure throughout your uh, creative journey? Yeah, well, um, you know, it just occurred to me that that this could be um, an educational book, and and also, I I think that there there are people there are publishers that are looking for things like this, 
Um, and I didn't know that in the beginning, but um, so I think um, in, in the school where these kids um, were, they, we were working with the um, English as a second language. Um, I don't know what they call it there, but um, um, coordinator. And, um, and so she was kind of the school's liaison. And um, it's really defined the, the, the liaisons in the schools. Um, and, um, and then, you know, it, I, I think they'd started bringing in other artists too after, after this experience. Um, and, then, and then if you, you can also write a curriculum I mean, I like writing curriculums um, <laughs> because I think that they're another creative act. Um, and so, so eventually they bought, you know, enough, enough of these books so that all teachers could have them. So they would understand what the experience of these kids were and, and use them in their own, in their own teaching. Um, so, you know, I, th I think you just start somewhere start you know in one place and in this case it was this wonderful English as a second language teacher um, and then you know have those people help you to do what they want because they really care about these kids. Absolutely. Um, I want to also ask Wendy um, about your teacher projects. Oh. Um, <laughs> what are the things that are now keeping you busy these days? I know you have a grandchild yeah, <laughs> probably being on grandma duties is, is <laughs> yes, it takes some time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but what are the other kind of, uh, I would say, photography related projects that are keeping you busy, busy these days? Well, I mean, I think it's a, as I said that I'm, um, you know, working in this project with with the um, Mexican youth in 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 Chicago and um, we're, we're doing, um, you know, public, public pieces, wrapping buildings <laughs> with their stories and their pictures. Um, but, um, but also, um, and then that will become a book, um, <clears throat> which I, I worked with, with um, um, Mayan children in, in 1991. So there's going to be, that, that's going to be one part of the book. And then what, their lives are like in Chicago at this time. Um, and um, yeah, and then I'm working on this project about my family, um, which will become a, a book. That's a, big, that's a big project that I've been working on for years and years. Um, and I'm sure there's more. <laughs> but <coughs> but um, but those are ones that I'm, I'm sort of actively working on um, on right now. Oh, I'm also working in Tanzania, which I have for about nine, nine years or 10 years um, with uh, the university, the biggest university there. Um, and we've made um, uh, posters um, for um, a, um, something called teaching and learning through photography that, that sorry, I got a bug here, um, which is um, taking um, all the different subjects and pairing them um, with different images and how to, use, how to use images to teach that subject. So we've even done physics and, and um, you know, English and Kiswahili and, and et cetera, um, because they don't have books. Um, and um, very many visual tools at all. And um, so we've made these beautiful posters, which are pretty wonderful. Um, and uh, so that we, we just had a first, the first course we did um, of students in the university. Um, they had a semester long course on how to use visual images and photographs in their teaching. So we're hoping that that will be, that that will help to make a more dynamic and um, equal um, community in the classroom. Because right now the kids are sitting and writing down what's on the board and 
Yeah, that's that's pretty innovative, I think. Um, yeah, it's it's been fun, and they really like it. Yeah. So. Speaking about teaching uh, photography, I must before we end uh, our session and event today, I just wanted to talk about your experience and my alma mater and Qatar University. Um, can you tell us about your story when you visited Qatar? Yeah, well, it was, I, I, I only stayed there for a, a, a few days and I think I was two days I was in, I was in your alma mater. And the first day I think I, you know, showed pictures very much like what I did today. And, and then the next day was supposed to be a, um, you know, in a kind of workshop, a learning workshop. And um, that was really difficult because what they had been doing was learning how to operate all the machines, mm -hmm. not how to use the machines for a creative purpose. Um, so, you know, they were very good at threading the projectors, for example, um, which I never would have been able to do. But, um, and um, so it was hard to make that, that transition um, to asking them to think about it in, in a different way. And I wish I'd had more time to be there. It would have been really interesting because I really liked them a lot, the students a lot. Um, and I really loved Cutter too. Um, it was one of my favorite places I've been and everybody was so generous and um, and also talked about how their lives had changed and so rapidly and that was really interesting. Definitely, would love to take you there and for you to see the changes. Yes. In the university and the country itself. Um, I can't imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, before we end today, um, just wanted to announce that uh, taking your words also, Wendy that we need to start somewhere and the community, bringing the sense of community is in the essence. Um, we are launching uh, Cape Cares, which is a, an initiative to support um, refugees and people in uh, conflict. And we hope through this initiative, we will be able to support um, organizations that have efforts uh, in peace building so uh, please tune in to our social media account and our website for more information about Cape Cares. And um, I want to thank you, Wendy, for your time today. Um, I'm sure this is just the start of so many more kind of collaboration efforts to come with you. We really enjoy um, your work. And also I would say I personally love Immigrant Alphabet Project um, and um, we really appreciate uh, all your time and kind of interest to work with us again. Well, thank you. I really enjoyed talking with you and really look forward to more. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. You too.